what an incredible energy you are about to experience. Jason is definitely one of the top facilitators in our industry, especially when it comes to behavioral change and business and just really, he is an entertainer and an educator. Definitely a unique approach to branding and training and humor. And did you know he's actually even a stand-up comic? What? Yeah. So tonight we're going to be talking about beautiful minds. So please, everyone, put your hands together. Please say welcome in the chat to our good friend, Jason Everett. What's up, Dude, Jason? Feel, <laughs> so good to see you. I feel like I should have, like, you said, like, and did you know he's a stand-up comic? I feel like there should be a mic and a joke that comes around with everything. But I, I don't know that I'm going to say anything hilarious or funny tonight, but I will say that it's going to be fun to hang out and... Uh, Bro, dude, thank you for having me. This is always a good spot. Always for a sure. good spot. Hey, it's dude, 4 p.m. I got something besides coffee in this cup. So let's look <laughs> party. Let's have a good time, right? Yeah, it's a good day. Uh, if you guys are drinking, tell me what you're drinking in the chat. I, now I want to know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to get but I like it. Okay, let's get it. <laughs> awesome, Jason. So I know tonight our, our topic is beautiful minds. So tell yes. me. Yes. Right now in your in your current world, what is what is beautiful for you right now? Dude, it's such a good question. I, you know, we were we were just chatting a little bit uh, as we were getting ready tonight. But man, I got some beautiful things going on in my world. Uh, you know, every single day I'm grateful for my wife and my two boys. I've got a uh, a four year old and a seven year old. They both just upped in age, so I got to do the quick math in there. But four and seven, they're always a good day. And man, if you want to talk about people who just love life, go look in the eyes of children to see anything beautiful you want to know. People love babies. Why people love kids? Because it's four. Our brain gets smashed by school, smashed by reality, smashed by work, and put us into this box that we say, yeah, I just got to go do this again today. <laughs> right? Like we kind of get on this like hamster wheel that we call life sometimes that people live yes. on. And um, so, dude, that, that's a beautiful thing in my world. And the other thing that's really beautiful for me right now is uh, we're getting ready to move into a new office, man. New office, new studio space that we get to move into. Super pumped about it. Uh, it's... it's uh, just that way, just about five five minutes that way. And uh, I also got a new house that I'm moving into uh, this next week as well. And I just think anytime you can change your space or change your environment or just change your settings, it just changes your flow. It changes your vibe. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. in this industry, people get to change their clothes to change their energy, right? It's like I get right. dressed up to go to a big, amazing event and it like changes my whole jam. But if you really want to change your energy, change your environment and change who's in your environment, and it just will, it will absolutely change you. So I'm just, I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of like giddy excited about the change because it's been sure. like a long time coven. I haven't moved houses in 12 years. So I just think it's, it's a really, it's a really special time to be at that moment of like transition, you know? Well, I know we're all super excited for you and I can actually feel a little bit of the same excitement because I just ordered a bunch of new stuff from my office. You can see I'm kind of yes. trying out some new situations in my office and stuff. And yeah, it's amazing like just it. like the, the feeling how it shifts and changes just by changing the environment because I'm, I'm just actually standing in a different part of my office right now yeah. than I usually am for these. Totally. And it just... It's like I feel more free, like the place I usually stand is a little kind of boxed in. And I'm like, yeah, I feel like I can dance. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm going to put everything in my new office is going to be on wheels, every single thing. Like I, I don't care what it Me is. Too. It could be a plant. I'm going to put it on wheels. So it's like <laughs> and just move it around and be like, oh, it's a totally different space. Like I just didn't realize yep. that I, I am. I do not do well with fixed positions. So I'm going to I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that my new space is like I can make a new office every day. So I'm really excited about that. Totally with you, my friend. I have basically, yeah. everything that I ordered from my office is on wheels. So, yes. So, so spot mm -hmm. on. We're such yeah. dorks, right? <laughs> so let's, um, you know, again, the topic of today is about beautiful minds. So what is so important about paying attention to mind? Yeah. Well, dude, I mean, you, you talk a lot about this stuff in general, right? You talk about mind, you talk about body, you talk about all these connections. And I know that's, that's a big piece of your world, but you know, I, th I think that mind is super important because as, as we identify, there's like a way in which we exist on a day-to-day -day basis. Like we just are here, I'm a body. And most people are familiar with, excuse this term. I borrowed it from a friend of mine, the meat sack that we get to occupy every single day. Cause that's like, sorry for the, 
the abruptness of the said meat sack, but that's it, right? Like we're, we are literally some form of consciousness that exists in a meat sack that we get to take care of and like float around this universe. And short of it being like, you know, our face on an iPad or something like that, like walking around with uh, wheels on the bottom of it to the point I'm getting wheeled around, we get to have this like amazing vehicle to navigate the universe in. But that vehicle that we navigate our universe gets run by this amazing thing called our mind. And our mind is not just something like, I was watching something the other day, and I don't mean, I don't know how, we'll see how deep we get today. Uh, but this idea that like, well, what is your mind? Is your mind just made up? He's like, it's okay, go wherever you want to go. Uh, your mind is is literally, you can see it as a, a, com, a culmination of reactions that are created by outside stimulus, right? Like you, you are born and do you have consciousness when you're born? Like, of course, you just snap into consciousness yeah. and then all of a sudden you start perceiving the world around you. And then we start to create this idea and this identity and this ego that we create that allows us to navigate inside the physical universe to say, okay, well, when I'm talking with Andrew, am I allowed to do this? Or allowed to do that? Can I? Is this an environment where I can cuss? Can't cuss? Uh, can I be high energy, low energy? Do I need to be more uh, aggressive or more excited or more whatever? Like we we constantly are trying to navigate the world that we live in. I don't know if you wanted a twenty five minute answer. By the way, I'm just giving you one. Uh, but this idea is that we constantly make these decisions on how we want to navigate the world that we interact with. And our mind is what allows us to either have quick, fast reactions and to navigate that world elegantly and flawlessly, or we can be trapped in the constraints of our own mind because of what we think on a daily basis. And so th there's people who live in either anxiety and stress about the future or fear and depression about something they've done in the past. And they live in this, it's this self-inflicted trap that it gets created inside their mind. And so for me, I just want people to be in a spot where they can they can look in the mirror, they can look at other people and be excited to exist, to be there, be happy because of what I'm doing with this thing up here that helps control meat sack in the physical universe. So right. I hope that's, I hope that's a, at least can come comprehensible. If anybody knows what the hell I'm talking about, do me a favor and comment and say, I, I get it. If you're like, that's, that's too <laughs> off the freaking rocker, like that's okay. Say, Jason, you crazy. That's totally fine as well. Feel free yeah. to call me out in there, but that, that's my thought. Yeah. Type in Jason, you crazy. Love that. They, they know. Well, people know. At least if you've been around like, me, they know. What's that? I said, if people have been around me for a minute, they know. They know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we know. <laughs> we know you crazy. But one of the things I like that you made a distinction of, too, because, yeah, when you're, when you're first born, yes, you are conscious. But I think that so much of um, what we kind of call the mind tends to develop over time. Like, you are mm -hmm. part of those experiences. And... You know, one of the things that Eckhart Tolle talks about is that the mind lives in our past and in our future. Like the mind gun almost has a hard time with the current moment because it's constantly trying to, you know, examine the future and, and, and try and predict the future. Or it's constantly going back to histor historical things and saying, oh, gosh, what did I say to that person? And what can I learn from that? And how can I not do that again? And so there's kind of like these different parts, I think, when we talk about mind, because some people think of um, like the, some Buddhist groups call it big mind and small mind. Like small mind is that the thought processes, right? Big mind mm -hmm. is the consciousness. And so I, I think it's important to have that distinction because part of it, I think we have a lot of control over, which is I think we have a lot more control over kind of the small mind part, like what we think and how we think right. than we give ourselves credit for. So like, how do, how do you help to direct the mind towards where you want it to go? Yeah, that's a super good question, man. I mean, I think part of it is, like you said, this the small mind, big mind kind of concept is like, if you think about it, your mind is really doing a lot of things uh, every moment. Like right now, your mind is keeping every organ in your body. And again, I, you've got some other subject on this that you could get into, I'm sure. But, but yep. you know, your your mind is is currently running all of your vital operations to keep your body going. Think about like a computer, right? Is that right now, I don't have to think, okay, Jason, breathe in breathe out. Like I don't have to think about that. I can just think, what do I want to say to Andrew? And somehow my mind is taking care of the breathing and my blood circulating and like my hands moving, like all these things are happening on autopilot and it's functioning. 
And so there's kind of like all the automatic things that we create, that we've created habits for, even like when I snap and do that, like I've created habits that allow me to very quickly create shortcuts and create that myelin in our brain, the little fatty tissue that says, hey, do that when Jason says this, like we create all these shortcuts. So one of the challenges is that really happens is that a lot of people don't understand the power of their habits. And I don't mean to use the word habits because people are like, oh yeah, bad habits, good habits. I've, I've heard the word habit before, but if you think right. about it, is that this, it's this idea that we can either have our habits become formed without any sort of structure, and it's just this like blob of habits that becomes us. And by the way, you become a blob when your habits are blobby, right? Like you, you either all your habits kind of flop around and you just start creating habits based on your environment, or you become wicked, that's my Boston side, <laughs> wicked intentional. We become wicked intentional about creating the habits that help drive our entire makeup of our character. And I would say it's, in, it's an intentionally created habit to curate the character that we want to uh, communicate to other people, okay? And so I really look at it as just go, okay, well, if I want to have a certain result in my life, right? Most people are like, I want to have a result. I want to have some money. I want to have a house. I want to have a business. I want to have a, a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a spouse or whatever. You're like, that's, that's a result. That's something that I want in my life. But what most people do is most people are very clear that the behaviors in their life are going to help them get that. So they go, well, look, if I want to get married, I better go on a date because that's the behavior that would get me closer to the thing that I'm after. But one deeper than the behavior, and most people only just go, "Why? Well, this is the thing I got to do. You want to get in better shape? You got to eat right and exercise. You want to get married? You probably should go on some dates. Right. But below behaviors, what does your mindset say about the behavior you're about to create? Is it all of a sudden your mindset becomes this like, well, but I don't, I don't want to go on virtual dates because that sucks. Or I don't want to... Um, I don't want to go on dates because people are horrible. And so your mindset starts to rip you off before the behavior even gets created. And so you ultimately get this negative result. But even one step below the mindset is what is your set of beliefs about the world that you operate from? Because if your belief is you can never meet somebody good online or your belief is, is that all the good ones are taken or any of that stuff, like, well, now all of a sudden, even below your mindset, the belief is kind of like your predetermined or preset of your mind that already exists before you have the first thought towards what you're after. It's like this right. whole, it's like this whole historical record. Like, like I'm old, Andrew. Uh, you know, I used to go to the library when I was really little and you pull out those like big old book things that yeah. I don't even know, like Dewey Decimal, Dewey Decimal System, system. Like, library thing. Bro, everybody's like, what are you talking about, Jason? I use Google. I just like type it in. Okay, well, imagine when it says search results and it says 90,000 bajillion search results on Google, right? 90 million search results. Imagine those are all individual, you know, index cards. And every time your mind goes, let's see the file on dating. It's like you pull out this thing and like 9 million experiences that you had about dating, that you heard about dating, that you knew about dating, your parents dating, your, uh, your aunts, uncles, cousins, brothers, uncles, like all that information exists. And you just have a immediate thought about what that is for you. That's already been pre-planned because your mind is designed to create shortcuts to save you time function in a normal environment. Right. Right. And so this whole idea is like your mindset is so important because if, if you understand that you can curate your mind and you can organize those cards in a way that's beneficial for you, you'll get to your results in half the time or a quarter of the time. And you can even get those results even faster. Your mindset about money, your mindset about relationships, your mindset about, about uh, how you heal your body. Any of those things can be changed virtually instantaneously if you start creating new habits which is what we do. I mean, that's what I'm, I'm all about, creating new habits for people and creating new sets, uh, new sets of instructions for your mind to carry out. Right. Yeah, and like you said, those shortcuts that the mind naturally creates because it wants to save energy, those can either be beneficial or they can be unbeneficial. So mm -hmm. what are some <laughs> of the ways that we make sure that they're beneficial <laughs> instead of um, basically the, the Dewey Decimal System comes out and takes us back to all these terrible things and totally. tucks us in the wrong direction. So how do we write this new Dewey Decimal System so that it's actually benefiting us? Yeah, I mean, I, I think part of it is you got to shock the system a little bit. Like what I, what I mean is, I, I guess I'll go back to that Dewey Decimal System, like card catalog example, is you almost have to like kick the whole card catalog over and let all the cards spill out on the floor. I mean, you really do, right? It's like, it's like, yeah, exactly. You got it, dude. I love it. I love that we're both standing. We can move around. It makes me happy. Um, but yeah, I, I love that, you man. You got it. You got it. It's called a. Um, uh, why am I drawing a blank? It's called a. 
that's the word pattern that, interrupt. Yeah, pattern like interrupt. I've said that before. Right. It's a pattern interrupt. So like if I was to come up to you and smack you across the face and say, Bruh, Andrew, it's time to get it together. Right. And I and I totally just like drop that on you. Now it's funny to say like here, because I can't really I can't touch you. Sorry. Uh, but you know, I it's one of those things that like if I did that, that would be a pattern interrupt. It might end up with you punching me in the face. I have to imagine it would. Um, but you know, it's it would be a pattern interrupt, it'd be something shocking. Oh, nothing but love punches. I got it. I got right. it. Um, but I, I think one of the things that we get to do is we have to do a pattern interrupt. And, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that we did is we actually created a challenge, a seven-day challenge. And I don't mean to like plug it, but like if we could talk about it, I will. Is that um, we created a seven-day challenge, man. And this idea of the seven day challenge was to create a pattern interrupt in people's lives. I mean, mm -hmm. all the stuff with, you know, all this whole, like the, the way the world is at the moment and all the things that happened back in March of last year for us in the U S and all the people for around the world, no matter where you're on from, uh, your life has been interrupted in the last 12 months in one form, fashion or another. Right. And unless you live in maybe like uh, in New Zealand that immediately locked the borders and had one case of uh, people getting sick and then they just they kept everybody locked out of the island, then maybe it's a different story. But for the most part, you had a giant pattern interrupt in this last year. And for some people, they took that pattern interrupt as an excuse to say, well, I'm just going to stop and I'm not going to do anything anymore. I'm just going to go on pause. Or there's people that that propelled them forward. And so we did this seven a beautiful minds challenge to shock you and to get your system to kick into high gear and then like rewrite the program. Think of it like when you restart your phone or restart your computer or whatever. It's like if you shut it all down, you kind of interrupt, you shut it all down and you kind of like reinstall some code, but you reinstall the things that you want to install. So we have all these challenges, all these things. And in just seven days, like it's not going to like change your life forever. Like if anybody tells you like in seven days, uh, will we'll change your life forever and you'll never be the same person. I call BS, but I would say it's designed to give you a taste of what it's like to have a change in your life that you, that you created yourself. And that's kind of, that's kind of the whole thing is that this whole idea of a seven day beautiful minds challenge is like a shock to get you started. Yeah. So what are some like, I mean, yes, COVID has been a um, pattern interrupt and a huge shock to the system. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, Let's hope that we don't have to go through those all the time to rewrite yeah. the, the, pet the maps. What are some um, maybe simpler or more practical approaches to having a nice pattern interrupt to, to shift the mind? Yeah, dude, easy pattern interrupt. Uh, and I learned this from Tony Robbins from the Get the Edge program that I listened to forever ago. Uh, and, and I just thought it was brilliant. And you probably heard this one before, so I'm not original in this, but I'll, I'll give you an easy one. Um, is just, you know, like drive to work a different way. Like take one more right turn, one more left turn, you know, do a little drive. You really want to pattern interrupt yourself? Spend the whole day riding with the other hand. You want to really pattern interrupt and like rewire your brain for success? Literally spend a whole day riding with the other hand and your brain will go into full chaos mode because you're like, every single shortcut I learned is not there anymore. And it'll make you feel like a four-year-old because you're learning to write from scratch because your mind knows what it's trying to create, but it can't do it because you literally are using the wrong hand. I mean, it's just, it's just an easy one. Like, I mean, dude, you've probably seen this one before, Andrew. Like, who people watching this, you haven't seen this. But Andrew, can you cross your arms for me? You've probably done this one before. Can you cross your arms? Which way do you do it? Like if you if you cross, oh, you do it like that. That's interesting. Okay. So if you cross your arms, which which arm is on top? Your left arm? My left. Is it your left arm is on top? Okay. So for me, my right arm is on top, right? So if I switch that, right? So if I switch that so that I switch to how you do it and you switch to how I do it, can you switch those for me and put your other mm -hmm. hand on top? Just switch those. Now, does that does that feel super comfortable and totally normal for you? No, it makes it almost makes me feel like my arm's up in the air. Right. It's like, it feels like you're tilted in one direction or the yeah. other. Right. And like, I know this is a really simple thing, but like when you do a pattern interrupt like this, like if you sit cross-legged or you train your arms or whatever, all of a sudden you're actually, you're wiring your mind to do something um, completely different than it's done before. And it, it'll feel awkward and it'll feel uncomfortable. And I think the reason why our brain creates shortcuts, it craves comfortability. And when you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation or an uncomfortable setting, you have to form new neural pathways inside, inside your mind because your brain is trying to make this work. So for example, right with your right hand, uh, and the, the Tony Robbins example was driving in one direction. I'm saying right with your other hand. I'm saying cross your arm like this. You may or may not have seen it. Um, and it makes a huge difference. Like just literally doing things like uh, putting on a belt upside down and backwards. 
like I know that sounds silly, but like flipping the belt over as long as it's not yeah. one of those, you know, I know you wear those like big giant Dallas belt buckles from Texas. I know that's what you normally I'm wear, really Andrew. Confused. Of course I do. Right. So it, it might be different for you to wear it upside down, but like literally flip your belt over, try and do it from the other side and your brain will start to short circuit. But what you're trying to do is you're, you're trying to short circuit your brain so that it goes, well, wait a second. If this is different, what else could be different? All you're trying to do is shock yourself into thinking that there's different ways to do things. And instead of you just going, no, it can't be done, or yes, it can't be done, and having that card catalog of things that you pay attention to, it's like shaking it all out on the ground. It makes your brain start to question everything. And when you start to question everything, you're like, maybe I can go back to school and do that thing that I want to do. Maybe it's okay if I put my art for other people to see in places. Maybe it is okay if I start that Instagram page that I've been thinking about or start that podcast or do that thing or um, ask that person out. I mean, look, it depends on who we're talking to, right? But right. all of a sudden, when you, when you shock yourself almost awake, right? Because the, the more patterns we have that shortcut our life, the more asleep we become, the more you can shake yourself out of that, you can wake yourself up. You want to know what I do every day? I should Tell say me. this about at least five days a week, bro. Five minutes of an ice cold shower, five days a week. Now you're like, hell no, I would never do that. Now, by the way, if I you would do an ice cold shower, like yeah. And by the way, I, I didn't <laughs> like it either in the beginning, and I still don't like. I'm not in love with it right now. It's not like I get in the shower, I'm like, oh, my ice cold shower is so blissful. Like I do it intentionally. And I'm shocking my system to pay attention. Yeah, I'm shocking myself awake. And most people are like, oh, it sounds painful. I would never do that. And if, you, if you've if you done it, do we hear and say done it in the chat? If you haven't, do we hear and say haven't? But I think I think the idea is, is that I'm intentionally creating stressful situations in my life or many points of stress or micro dosing my stress, okay? Mm. Micro dosing my stress to create that slap in the face sort of moment that just says, maybe I should rethink what I'm doing today. And what ends up happening is then when other things hit me, and that because it look, does life throw random crap at you? Of course it does. So when those other things hit me in the face, I can go, oh, that's no big deal. I mean, it's, it's nothing compared to my cold shower this morning, compared to my different drive to work, compared to my whatever, like all of those things and that variety and connection are what is stimulating. Which anyway, I'll throw one more thing out there, which is why, by the way, we people love to travel because everything you experience when you travel is new and it's creating new neural pathways. That's why people feel alive when they travel because they're outside of their normal and it's constantly pattern interrupts. In fact, the, the further you go away from home, the more pattern interrupts you'll get. For sure. Absolutely. And I mean, for those of you that are out there, like we were talking about these pattern interrupts and it triggers us into that place that kind of like you said, would tosses over the cart full of cards and then we get to start to reorganize them. How many of you felt like last year, your cart full of cards got thrown out and now you're in that process of, okay, how can I put these back together in a new way? And hopefully in yeah. an exciting way. Yeah, I mean, look, we all get to design our life and I think sometimes people don't think that they get to, right? I think some people sure. think that like life happens to them. They're not doing life. Life is just a thing that you just show up and experience. But what I've seen is like, you really do get to select things in your life. Even if you just say, even if you just say, I can't do anything, that's actually a choice that you're making to decide that you can't do anything about your life. Like every day we get up and go, well, I can either drive to work or I can go do this instead. And, and I want to say this too, because sometimes people get kind of hung up in this, Andrew, is that people go, well, I have to do what I'm doing right now, right? right. There's nothing I can do to change. I, I, I have to. And you might be right. You, you absolutely might be right. I'm not saying this is like this Pollyanna approach of like, just do whatever you want, do what, what feels good and just make, that's not right. what I'm talking about. I'm just saying, if you're, if you're unhappy with what you're doing, the only person who can change it is you, period, period dot. If you're unhappy in a relationship, then you need to have a conversation with the other person in a relationship and see if they're happy, number one. And number two, say, look, how do we fix this so we can both get happy again? Cause something's off. And it needs to be fixed. And by the way, the happiest people on planet Earth have bad days sometimes. So don't feel like, you know, because you had a bad day, it doesn't mean that you're a horrible person. The, the TV, you know, that good thing that we all pay attention to in worship, right? The TV that we pay attention to says everybody should have good days all the time. And if you're not, you're the wrong character in the story. So don't, yeah, mm -hmm, social media, uh, yeah. Andrew, I mean, your Instagram life is not as perfect as I think it is. You mean like you've argued with your wife before? That's so crazy. You don't uh, post. I mean, you, I, it's I so think true, dude. Like we need to, people definitely, you know, and 
we don't always kind of put that stuff out there because we we do want to be uplifting and we want to be positive and stuff. But definitely yeah. there's that that sense that what we see through through yeah. social is the truth. And it's like it's it's a piece. It's a curated piece of the truth. Right. I, you know what would be funny? I think we should we should put out a petition for this, Andrew. I think you and I need to lead the charge on this and figure it out. I think we should we should put out and see if we can get it like nationally recognized as a uh, a real week on social media, where all you're allowed to do is post to terrible photos, right? Terrible photos, you at your worst all week long, no filters, no nothing, and like mm -hmm. you you can't post anything curated. But the only problem is people are gonna then curate their horrible things. It's like it's like <laughs> Elf on the Shelf. It's like people are gonna be like, oh look at how dramatically horrible my life is. They'll spill coffee on the ground and be like, oops. Like it, that's the only problem with real week. Yeah. It would never work. But I, I think it's this idea that wouldn't it be fun if just for a week we're just like, let me just post all the the crappiest photos that I took of my ten photos that I thought came out decent uh or the 10 photos that came i came out instead of posting my good one what if you posted the crappy one the problem is nobody would watch it but i i think it'd be amazing if we had the freedom to do that you know what i'm saying yeah i've, I've seen a couple <sighs> campaigns like that where it's like you know post a picture without the makeup on and some things like that which i think are really beautiful to to see that that's because that's really what people actually want right like they really do want the authentic connection with others and yeah. And even, even on social though, I think people like, I was like, I, first of all, I want to say, I'm really proud of you, Andrew, for being so brave that you came on today's show without makeup. I just wanted to say for all the other guys out there that are, that are concerned about wearing their makeup today. Have you know, I, I don't appreciate have you without makeup. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Maybe you powdered yourself up. I don't know. I have my, I have my, I have some makeup back there in case I've got some breakouts or something. It happens when you're on camera. That's how it goes. But I would say, um, I, I think that the challenge with social all the time is again, everything is so curated and so specific and so whatever. And I think if you really look at that, that is just an amplification of our regular lives anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, we live in this thing of like, well, I don't want to go outside unless this happens or I don't want to whatever. And until you become like 80 year old and you don't give a mess anymore, do you know what I'm saying? Is like you're 80, you walk outside in your underwear to pick up your, I don't know why I said the newspaper. I don't get a newspaper, but you know, you go outside to do something. I don't know, pick up, pick up your Amazon order. I guess that's the new thing, right? That would be the deal. Not that Amazon yeah. is new, but I'm just saying, instead of like from the 1950s, like walking out in your robe and your undies to pick up your newspaper, I guess it's going out to get your Amazon delivery is the new thing, right? The right. new version of that. And it's like, you go out to get your delivery in your underwear and you just don't give a crap anymore because you're 80 years old and you're like, good to see you, Susan, from across the street. Hey, Tom, you know, like waving at all your neighbors. But, and, I wish everybody could have the the knowledge of that. I don't give a crap anymore like an 80 year old when they're not 80 years old. Like how freeing would that be? Because mm -hmm. they just get to be themselves instead of like the last 10 years of their life. Be a, I don't give a crap anymore. And I think that's part of the mindset shift that's really important right now to have the beautiful mind is to start to let go of the um, the approval factor, the comparison and approval factor. So um, I know for me, like I, you know, I've been, I'm a life coach. I've been a life coach for 11 years. I've, you know, had a life coach since 2003. And I still go through those moments of like, oh, well, that person just posted this and, you know, that, that got a lot of likes and, oh, maybe I should post a thing like that or maybe I shouldn't say these kind of things. Like, I think it's right. such a natural thing for us to go through. But, I mean, how do we quiet that down so it's <laughs> not such a, yeah. a hindrance? Because that, that's a huge hindrance to us progressing. Well, look, I, I mean, look, you, you got to realize that you're literally fighting nature with that statement right? Is that we, um, are, one of our core principles as a, as a society is to survive, like, right. As a, as an individual, like we want to survive and the way in which over the years of us existing is, has existed is that we, we must be in some form of survival mode at all given times. What we know is that right now in order to survive, you have to be liked by a community and by a culture. And there mm -hmm. are the rare people who don't who don't say that. But like, look, if I want to if I want to exist and this is this is a real it's like if I want to exist in the space that you and I both play in, in the salon owner, you know, uh, 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 salon greater beauty community that exists. Right. Is if I have to look around at everybody that's around me 
And I go, okay, in order to be like them and survive and have my greatest level of survival that I can have, I must be at least somewhat like these people, right? Because if I would have showed up in my boxer short to the interview, it would probably run over very well. And you would have been like, well, hey, wait a second. I can't put Jason on the air. Well, what if I showed up um, wearing a, a tank top or, you know, like, I don't know, some, I, I look like, um, be another example. I don't know. I just showed up looking like Snooky or something. You'd be like, what, what just happened? I don't, I don't know. You, you kind of have to figure out what environment do you want to fit into? And then you start paying attention to what's around you. So the, the trick that I think most people don't tell you is that the, the, the real trick is fitting into your environment without caring about fitting into your environment. Hmm. Like, I know that sounds super weird. Even as I say it, it even it's uncomfortable to say, but it's like, you watch other people. Like, oh, Andrew, it looks like you just do it so effortlessly. You create all this content and it's just so freeing. And you just, you just don't care about what everybody thinks. You're like, no, I, I care. It's important. I pay attention to it, but I may not let it run my life. Does that make sense? Right. Like, Cause we do need to pay attention to the world around us and what goes on, but it either controls you or you are aware of what it controls and you, you permit it to only control certain parts of what you do because you understand what you're doing. That makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Like, and, it, and it's hard to, this is my thought. Yeah. yeah and it, I mean, it's, it's hard to give ourselves that space and that permission to step back and say, okay, well, I don't have to be fully obsessed with, everything that's happening 24 hours a day, which, I mean, just look at a couple of studies and you'll recognize that it's the most unhealthy thing that you could possibly do for yourself to just obsess over that stuff all the time. Yeah. And so we do have to find our ways to take a step back and give ourselves space to breathe and to reset. Because even just what happens to the nervous system once you start looking at the screen, it's really incredible. <laughs> like it takes you Bro. really <laughs> outside of that. This, this is the new crack cocaine of our generation. It really is. Uh, real. I mean, I, I just have to say, like, it, it, like, I think, I really do think that when we fast forward the world 20 years in the future, people are going to be having some very interesting conversations about how people used to be completely addicted to their cell phones. And, and I think it's, it's like talking about smoking. It's like talking about alcohol. It's like talking about cocaine or heroin or other things. And it's like, I don't know if you know this, but they've, they've done some massive studies on how addictive uh, your cell phones are. And, and by the way, in the beautiful minds challenge, if you want, I, I, I give your, your audience this seven day beautiful minds challenge for free, by the way. Um, That'd be awesome. One of the things that we talk about, yeah, dude, one of the things that we talk about in our beautiful minds challenge is going on a full social media blackout for seven days. Ooh. Now, think about that for a sec. Cause I, that's the one that gets me. I'm not going to lie. That's the one that gets me. I'm like, oh, my whole business runs on social media, right? Like I was like, I don't know if I can handle that. So it, it's actually on our mental challenges. we got mental, emotional, and physical challenges. And under mental, you can do 30 minutes of meditation. You can do a, a, a daily random act of financial kindness, meaning you got to like buy something for somebody. And this is super important that you don't interact with on a daily basis. Like I can't buy my assistant a coffee and be like, here, thanks. My random act of kindness. No, I'm talking about finding a stranger and paying for their groceries at the grocery store. That's what I'm talking about every single day for seven days. Okay. Another one is a social media blackout, no social media, delete it from your phone, no social at all. And I, I've had some people who've gone through the challenge and they did the seven day social media blackout because you're supposed to pick the one that scares the crap out of you. Okay. Yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. The last one, by the way, is no television. You can go to your entire calls. So one of those four things. But here's what happened. They said, the people who went on social media blackout, they said, do you know how many times I reached for my phone expecting to go on social media during the day? They said it was obnoxious. The amount of yep. times I reached for the phone, reached for the phone, reached for the phone, reached for the phone, reached for the phone. And they said, I had no idea how controlled I was. Not even having it just bu not buzz on them all day long, but they were like, oh, do I want to? Mm, I don't. Mm -hmm. And like all day long, and they're like, what the hell? Like, how much of my time is spent on there? And if you don't know, your phone tracks how much time you're on every app. You can go on to your iPhone, Android, whatever, and it'll tell you how much time. Yeah, Patricia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally bad. Uh, yeah, it sounds like bliss. I, I, if you imagine what we like, that would be life changing for seven days to go on a full, full social media blackout. 
And and it's a life changing is like it's just it it introduces to you to a level of awareness. And by the way, if you guys want the seven day challenge, um, comment on this video and just say seven day, and I'll even give you a phone number you can text into, and I'll, I'll give it to you guys for free because I just thought yeah. if everybody can have a taste of what's possible for them, um, then it starts to open their mind to what else they can do, and I think that's just epic. Yeah, thank you for doing that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude, for sure. If you want to give us the phone number, we can. Yeah, throw yeah. Sorry, I mean, here I go. I'll I'll put it up here. So the phone number you want to text to, if you're in North America anyway, if you're in America, you want to text, uh, text text phone number. My team will send you the link for the Sunday challenge. Uh, the phone number is nine one six two five eight seven two three nine, and that basically text into my team. So nine one six two five eight seven two three nine, um, and we'll put it in there, and then you just text. Uh, the number seven and then the word day all is one word. So seven day, the number seven and then the words D-A-Y, seven day. Uh, and then it'll give you a text and it'll send you a whole setup. It'll give you access to like the challenge and the mental, emotional, physical. There's videos of me and I explain, I, it explains like what you need to do on each of the days that you're operating. And it takes you through the whole thing. And what I recommend people do is they do it, um, they do it, with a group of people like Andrew, I'd be like, Hey, Andrew, do you want to do the seven day challenge thing with me? And like, I pick my three, you pick your three, we share what they are with each other. And then we're like, all right, let's see how we can do this. Right. And so I'll be like, Hey, Andrew, how's it going for you? You're like, dude, this meditation thing is killer. I can do like five minutes before my mind goes ape. Right? <laughs> or, you know, like, or, or it's like the social media blackout is like, dude, I can text you and you are my only source of social media. So please text me back every day with a photo of what you're doing. So I can feel like there's some social media in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Send me a picture of your breakfast, please. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did um, like a four day weekend where I was like, okay, complete shut off here, like yeah. nothing. And I, I totally understand what you're saying because I can't tell you how often just you would grab your phone, your finger would do that. And you would just like, why did I just do that? What the hell? Right. So well, 90% up to like 90% of your day is run by just pure habit. Like, yeah, just habits. And we we're completely unaware of that habit until we do something like this, until we do something like your seven day challenge to do the pattern interrupt and give ourselves the ability to step back into awareness and say, oh, that's what I've yeah. been doing yeah, every yeah. day. Right. That's where I've been consuming all my time and been ignoring my spouse. I wonder why I have such a bad relationship. That's so weird. Right. Right. Like it's this whole thing of trying to understand why we do what we do. And until you take yourself out of it, it's not going to do it. I mean, I, you and I are both uh, avid outdoors people. I mean, you're wearing the flannel today, so you get more flannel credit. I tried to go with the streetwear and my sparkle shirt because I was, I was going to be on the <laughs> Zambia show. You know what I'm saying? Um, but, but like you went for the woodsy vibe today. And, and like the thing I love about going places and it's becoming harder and harder to be really honest is that I love to go places with no cell signal. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. It makes my heart happy. And it's like, you know, now it's like you go to Yosemite Valley, which is not too far from me. You go to Yosemite Valley and your phone works almost everywhere. And I was like, dang it. I remember I camped there before and I spent seven days in Yosemite. My phone didn't work for seven days and it was the most blissful thing. And that was, you know, 15 years ago now. Right. And it's yeah. like, you're starting, it's starting to become harder and harder to get on that spot. It used to be I'd get on an airplane and you don't get cell reception on an airplane. Now it's like, hey, if you want to get cell reception for the three hour flight that you got, pay this money and ta da, you get to work. And so it's like it's becoming harder and harder to escape. So if you can't escape it, you need to control it. Mm -hmm. Right. You need to control it and figure out what do you want to do? Put budgets on. There's apps you can put on your phone that allow you like there's some really good ones that will allow you to say, I want to set my Instagram access to an hour a day or whatever it is, or 30 minutes a day. Set your Facebook time and it'll budget you and it'll say, sorry, Andrew, you've reached Instagram limit for a day. It's time mm -hmm. to talk to real people. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing is this thing can be a, a total disruption to your life or you can change it and you can create it into something that's super supportive. Like with some of my coaching clients that are in struggling to put new um, patterns into their day, this becomes a support because the calendar in here, you can set reminders. So good. It's like, oh, yeah. well, actually create the time in your calendar when you're going to stop and do that breathing exercise. 
Don't just think yeah. like, oh yeah, I'm going to fit it in three times a, the, today because you're going to go to bed that night and go, oh crap, I completely forgot to do that breathing exercise three times. So yeah, put it into the calendar, get the reminders going, actually plan it out. So this thing actually becomes an asset to you instead of um, disruption. Yeah. And it's all awareness, right? Is like, if you're aware of what you can use it as a tool to do, um, then you control what's going on. Otherwise, it's just going to control you. And again, it's just like your environment, right? You either get to set the boundaries and parameters for the habits and behaviors that you want to you want to incorporate into your life, or the behaviors and behaviors get set for by for you by what you interact with and what you do. So we're either in control of our day to day activities and consume it, or we are at the mercy of those things. And I, I always say that. And somebody, I, I can think of right now. Every time I say something about controlling your environment, somebody goes, "Control is an illusion. We control nothing." And I'm like, "Well, then you're going to be stuck." forever being at the mercy of something else. I can control a lot. I can hang up this and leave right now. I can, uh, you know, I can run out of my office and go drive my car. I can, there's so many, I have so many options every single day and that's all within my control. So I think that the issue becomes when we start to think that we're out of control or we feel like we're out of control, that's when kind of that mental uh, jail starts to happen is that we just go, well, I'm just going to have to be like this forever. I'll never make that amount of money. I'll never do what I've been meaning to do because I just can't control anything. It's an illusion that we keep any control, you know? Yeah. Hey, Jason, I hate to do this, but I have to go out of the program and come back in because my computer's doing the weird thing that it does once in a while where I start yeah. to look like a robot. Like I start doing oh. digital jitters. Yeah, dude, do what so, you got to do. You look all normal with me. You can figure Don't it out. Move. Do you want me to hold the fork down? We can make this happen. Let's dance and vamp for half a sec. All right. Hopefully. Yeah. Oh, look. All right. I'm not doing the. Are you moving now? Dance anymore. Um, so here's Dude, what's like funny. Is you're talking about this uh, social media and um, getting out of social media. Shirley's asking, does this include the news? And Patricia's like, can I text? <laughs> It's so good. And by the way, um, I mean, you get to decide, like I, it says on the challenge, either um, do a social media blackout or a television blackout. Now I'm going to, I'm going to kind of put this out for how I, how I talk about this challenge. Okay. Is that in the videos I talk about this is like, I want you to pick either no social media or TV. You can keep one or the other, but if you do really want to take the challenge up a notch, and this is the thing. There's four things under mental challenge. You want to take this challenge to like the next level, do all four things in the list of challenges. So all I'm saying is if you do one thing on this list, your life will change. You do three things like we recommend, your life will change. And I just mean you'll, you'll create enough awareness that you'll be curious to change the rest of it. And you do one seven day challenge of social media. You do one, so you might do one challenge that's no television. And it really, I hate to say it doesn't matter. You just, you got to read this list and then you pick everything on the list that scares you the most and you pick it. And then you go, I'm going to do it. And so like under emotional, I'll give me another one, Andrew, is under emotional. So there's three challenges, mental, emotional, and physical. And by the way, if you want access to this challenge, totally free. It's a seven-day challenge. Comment seven day and either me or my team will send you a message and I'll give it to you or you can text in like we talked about earlier, right? Is that um, under mental, we got meditation, random acts of kindness, social media, blackout, no TV. I'm going to give you a couple under emotional, okay? Uh, and you guys tell me if this one's scary, if any of these scare you, okay? You tell me what it is. You type it in if you think it would be hard. Uh, under emotional, because for emotional support, some people, I know nobody on this call would ever do this, smoking or consuming any tobacco products, okay? That's emotional support for some people, right? Let me uh, go smoke a little bit. Now, if you're in yeah. if you're in Paris, I was out, like I'm in California. There's not a lot of people who smoke as much in California, but I was in Paris and everybody and their grandma's smoking. Like I, feel, I felt like by the time I was there for three days, I'm like, am I supposed to be a smoker? Are we, are we still smoking? I'm from California. Yeah. Like I was like, what is going on? We've been restaurant free smoke for like my whole life. So smoking and tobacco. Another one is completely eliminating fast food. Now you could take fast food as um, fast food from a drive through, like someplace. If you can, if you can order your food from the car and not have to get out of your car, that's fast food. You could also say any food just well, eating hang out. On, hang on now, not in COVID times. You don't have to get out of your car a lot of places that actually do healthy food right now. <laughs> True. Well, that's, and that's what I'm saying. You could just say fast food, like drive through food, or you could just say eating out in general, right? You get to decide. I'm, I'm, uh, another one on emotional support. 
dude, I got, I got it. I got it. I knew what you're, I knew what you're doing there. Um, another one is caffeine, right? Some people are addicted to caffeine. Some people are addicted to sugar. Some people are addicted to things like pain pills. And I don't mean like pain pills, like hardcore ones, but if that one, if that's on your list, let's get rid of those too. But I'm talking like even just Advil, Tylenol or whatever, that's just a, a slight numbing of your system. And the last one, and this one gets people in the beauty industry like nobody's business, I'm just gonna say it right now, is no alcohol for seven days. I know, some people Some people are like, screw you, Jason. I need my glass of wine. I need my wine and my chocolate every single night. I need my whatever. Right. And it's like, uh, you know, I, I had a guy who was talking to me the other day. He said, Jason, I don't know that I can do that one. I'm like, that's what you need to do it. Because these everybody who drinks a glass of wine every day or only on Fridays or whatever. And if it stresses you out to knock that out of your life, it's why you need to knock it out of your life because either it controls you or you control it and you take that seven days off of doing it and you're like, I really need to have that glass of wine tonight. I just need that whiskey. I just need that cigar. I just need that whatever. Like if it makes you twitchy, then it's got a hold of you, Yeah. right? Yep. And so those are the emotional challenges. So it, did any of those scare you guys? If it did, do me a favor, type it in. If any of those scared you, I want to know. What were the ones that got you on that list? I'd love to know. Uh, and again, I, if you I want this whole seven-day challenge, like, comment, man. I'm kind of a, Beth's with me. Beth said my scotch. And like, <laughs> I'm kind of that guy that, especially once I close up my my business for the day, I go downstairs, I start to cook my dinner and stuff. And that's like pour my glass of wine, pour a scotch, make a cocktail, something sure. like that. And it's interesting because every once in a while, I do kind of have to give myself that like, okay, you need to stop for a week or two because you mm -hmm. need to just kind of make sure that right. it's not controlling you. And the great thing is, is like, we've done cleanses and things like that. And you get to the end of the 14 days or so. And you're like, yeah, you know, I, I don't have to have it, but I enjoy it. And I don't feel like it's affecting me. So it's almost like you kind of right. get that reset to make the yeah. decision consciously again. And I think that's what's so important, Jason. It's like not saying that wine is bad, not saying that a glass of scotch is no, bad. Not at all. There's scientific, you know, studies about the benefit of a drink a day or something like that. But it's just that I think what you're trying to share with us is, again, it's more about is something out there controlling you? Is something out there numbing you from experiencing life on your terms? Completely. Completely, man. And I think that's a, that's a big part of it, right? Is Is to that point of like, if you can't do it, or if it scares you to do it, or it worries you to stop any of that. You just gotta put yourself in that check and it, you need to have that pattern interrupt uh, over your space to be like, okay, I wanna I wanna change this out. I mean, I used to have a boss, an old boss I used to work for, that he's like, I only have one, one bottle of wine a night. Not a big deal. <laughs> I was like, a whole <laughs> bottle? Like just you? You just have a whole bottle of wine a night? He's like, ah, I don't always finish it. I'm like, mm-hmm, yeah. And, and when I was around him, he would always knock out two bottles of wine because he would have one for him and one for the other person he was hanging out with, whether that was his spouse or whatever else. And what he meant was he doesn't always finish both bottles of wine. And I'm like, bro, that's called a problem, right? And now you might not have that same problem, but my guess is you're lying to yourself if you think that like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I'll give you an example of where I lie to myself. It's like, I used to think like, oh, you know, it's not, I, there's food's not really that big of a thing for me. I could stop, whatever. But I remember I went on a no sugar, no salt diet for uh, for like almost six months where it was like no sugar, no salt. And I, there's sugar in my meal, but it was very limited. Uh, not like, oh, I'm going to put some extra salt on my food. It was just a salt free diet. And it took about three or four months before like things really started to change. And somebody handed me a potato chip. Like I was <laughs> at a thing and I had a potato chip and I put a potato chip in my mouth. And I am not kidding, dude. I spit that thing out because like, what is that? <laughs> spit it out on the floor. And I was like, what is that? And I was like, did somebody put something on that? And they're like, uh, no, that's just a regular potato chip. And I had realized that my entire taste bud system in my mouth had changed because I was eating out so much. I was traveling, I was on the road, I was doing all this stuff. 
And most foods that we consume on a regular basis uh, have so much salt in them that we like our tolerance to salt builds up. So we have to actually put more and more and more and more and more salt on to even taste the flavor of the food. So it was funny because people were coming over to my house eating dinner and I'm cooking and they're like, uh, Jason, I can't even taste this food. I'm like, what are you talking about? This is amazing. This is fantastic. And they're like, yeah, no, it tastes like the most land food ever because <laughs> salt is even addictive and you can get used to it. Sugar is the same way. Caffeine is the same way. And if you take a look at the, the, the sugar and salt content of most of our foods, it's just ridiculous. And it actually blocks all those receptors for you to do it. So unless you kind of do that cleanse and take and take care of it, and I'm talking months of no sugar and no salt, it won't change your biochemistry of how you perceive those uh, signals to your brain. Yeah. So those are some of the emotional things. What, are, what were the others? Dude, la last one. I'll give you the last one. And then again, if anyone wants this challenge, comment seven day and I'll, I'll hook you guys up. Uh, it's physical challenges. Now I'm not, this isn't like go run marathons for seven days. It's it's a little more chill like than that. On fire, and I, maybe? What, what's that? Like walking on fire maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Walking on fire. I preserve for the, uh, the, that's day eight is walking on fire that I'll, t I'll take you through that. Uh, by the way, if anyone wants to walk on fire with me, we're doing some cool stuff. Uh, do me a favor, send me a private message and say, I want to walk on fire. I know how to do that. It would be awesome. Okay. Um, so physical challenges, uh, are you can do 30 minutes of yoga or stretching. Okay. 30 minutes of yoga that, you know, 30 minutes of a guided setup. You can just do a YouTube video or whatever. 30 minutes of yoga. That would be an option. You could do that. Okay. Uh, another one would be five minutes of a daily cold shower. I already told you, Andrew, about my cold showers. I'm talking five minutes. Now, I hear a lot of people that are like, oh, Jason, I take cold showers. And they tell me this pansy response. They go, I take a cold shower. I'm like, you do? And they go, yeah, I take a hot shower. And the last 30 seconds, I turn it on cold and I go, Burr, and then I take a cold shower. No, no, no. Five minutes of a cold shower. And I'm talking whole experience cold shower. If you need to, like turn it on cold for a minute and just see how long you can last, then turn it warm. Okay. But I want you to start cold because it shocks your system. And the goal is to work yourself up to by the end of the five days or the seven days, a full five minutes of a cold shower. And by the way, that'll scare the crap out of most people trying to take a cold shower. I know that was not my favorite, but when I got used to it, I was like, okay, I got it. Um, and the other option would be a 30 minute outdoor physical workout, like 30 minutes of outdoor activity um, that you're just outside in the elements, no matter day, night, whatever, it doesn't matter, 30 minutes outside. So either yoga, cold shower or workout, that's all I want you to do for physical. I don't need you to run a marathon, run 10 miles, I don't need you to do that stuff. Just you decide for 30 minutes of working out. And then all of a sudden you're gonna start to feel better because you're exerting yourself. And again, you can do yoga and stretching, even if it's just, if you don't have a lot of flexibility, just do as best you can and do it. And all of a sudden, within these challenges, right? All of a sudden you go, great. So here's, here's an example. I might say, I'm going to go for mental. I'm going to go no TV for seven days for emotional. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm cutting out fast foods, no TV, no fast food. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do? That's all I do is eat fast food and watch TV. Uh, and then I'm going to do a daily cold shower and you go, that's me a crazy seven days, cold shower every day, no TV, no fast food. And again, pattern interrupt. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you're going to start to see things that you didn't see in your world before that you now see just because of a couple of these basic changes. Seven days. Commit to it. Do it. And this is the other thing. If you make it to day five and you cheat and you don't take a cold shower, your seven days starts over. You, you can't. No cheat days. Right? So there's not like a, oh. Cold day. Dude. Oh. I'll tell you the best cold shower you will ever take. And when I say best, I don't mean the most comfortable. I mean, the most shocking and most pattern interrupting ever is the cold shower you take when there's snow on the ground outside and the pipes are freaking cold. Mm. I went to Lake Tahoe and there's snow on the ground. I took a cold shower and I was like, oh, mama. Like it was really, <laughs> so it like sucks the air out of your lungs and you do all this stuff. You're like, I don't even know how people do it. I hate Jason. I hate this stupid challenge. I hate everything about it. But like when you get out of the shower, you will feel like a totally different person. I promise. But you got to commit. You got to do a full seven days. I so I did I did the cold shower thing for a bit, and I will say that afterwards you feel fantastic. But yeah. it never honestly got to a point like I I don't know. I guess I just had to do it longer. But it really never got to a point where it wasn't just like. This sucks so bad. Like it was really okay, so. So hint, hint for you because you just did exactly what everybody does. Most people get in the shower tense, right? right? 
Most people get in the shower tense. They're like, this is going to suck. This is going to suck. This is going to suck. <laughs> okay, shower. The goal is not can it get in and not suck, but can you get in and not be tense? Can you get your body to not immediately react to it? So the goal is when you get in the shower, can you get in, have your body relaxed, still feel that it's cold, know that it's cold, be able to take the shower without every muscle in your body constricting and constraining. So the goal is, can you be in a position of stress, but not have your body in a moment that it's stressed out? And that's a really big thing is like, I still don't get in a cold shower and I'm like, yeah, da, 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 da. you know, like right. I get in the cold shower and I'm still like, whoo. And I, I literally do that when I get in the shower, I'm just like, whoo. And then I, I take my cold shower, I finish up, I do what I'm going to do. And I'm like, it's cold, but I know, like I tell myself, like relax into it, relax into it, relax yeah. into it. So it's like, relax my shoulders, relax my body, relax all those things. And it's just a very, it's a very different experience when you can be in a position of stress, but not be stressed. That makes sense. Awesome. Guys, please type into the chat one thing that you're taking away from what Jason shared with us today, because he just delivered quite the mindful of beautiful things. So please type into the chat one or two things that you feel like you took away from today. And Thank you, Jason, for being so generous with the, the crew here, too. Dude. If you did oh, miss the phone number to type in, you can go back. It's in both the Facebook and YouTube chat. But if you just type in seven day in your comments, Jason's team yeah. will come back. He'll look at the comments and make sure they reach out to you to, to get, connect with you. Totally. I'll hook you up. I'll hook you up. Yeah, yeah I, I hope you guys had a good time today. I, I, Andrew, we could just hang out. I love hanging out with you, man. I would hang out with you as often as possible because I think we're we're on a similar path of like helping people see how great they can be. And I think that more people need to know how amazing they already are. Absolutely. Yeah. And Jason, I know that we have your social media up here at Jason Everett. You can find him on Instagram. Where else is great for them to connect with you? Well, if you're in the salon spa world, um, Go over, check us out at highperformancesalon.com. You can go find tons of good information, resources. You'll see my mugshot all over that uh, at High Performance Salon. Um, that's probably another good place. But yeah, find me on Facebook, on Instagram. I don't know. That Those are kind of the big places. And also on YouTube is where we like to hang out. But if I can do you any favor, help you, whatever I can do to help better the industry, I'm here for it. So let me know. Uh, be happy to serve anybody that needs help. Either me or my team in touch with you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much from everyone here at Samview. We appreciate you, Jason. We know you're a busy guy. So thank you for taking the hour out to, to hang out with our community here. We appreciate you. Dude, thank you so much, man. Take care.